since the new government took over, uh, or not so new now. Um, it's also um, some time since the constitution was promulgated, and so we are well aware of what's expected of us as a country based on constitutional demands. I think we are also staring at an expiry date to the Millennium Development Goals next year, 2015, which means that we should be at a point where we are assessing very critically what we have been doing and uh, preparing ourselves for a new development framework and uh, by and large we are here with a devolved system of government and asking to what extent has the big um, push and the, the, the lot of effort that has been put over the years to bring this country to a point of um, equality inclusion of persons um, and it's a good time to question who's doing what and how do we fit in as individuals, whether you are male, female, um, person living with disability or able, or um, youth or senior and so forth. And we want to know where we brought in to the wider development agenda in Kenya. So first to take the floor will be our main uh, opening speaker today, uh, who's Dr. Josephine Obonyo. As we sit here as a public and also members of various institutions, I'm sure we are all clear and as stakeholders and keen to understand the status of gender mainstreaming and gender equality agenda in Kenya today. And we can begin by asking ourselves a few questions. First and foremost, what is the problem in our current context as far as gender mainstreaming and issues of gender equality are concerned in Kenya? What exactly is the problem? Because one thing is for sure, if we don't identify the gap and ask ourselves these questions, more often than not, we can be busy but chasing our tails or generally just groping in the dark. So what is the problem that we are addressing? Now secondly, what is the implementation strategy for gender equality for the various institutions and what are the anticipated outcomes? What exactly are we doing? How are we going about it? The other question we need to address is, what are the strategies that are being adapted by these institutions to ensure that gender concerns are put into consideration in practice and particularly in the workplace? Because that's where we go wrong. Is it really practical? Do we just have them on paper? Is it just theory? Or are they actually applicable and are they happening? The other question we need to address also is, to what extent do the multifaceted approaches to gender equality complement each other? Are they standalone uh, uh, activities that we are doing? Are we complementing each other in any way? Is there any mechanism for networking and co collaboration among us as players in this field? But at the moment, we have some elements of upcoming inequalities in terms of men's and boys' rights. In many forums we attend where we're dealing with gender equality and gender mainstreaming, there are always issues that are being raised about boys' rights and about men's rights. And I think the question you're asking here is, have we attained equilibrium as far as gender equality issues are concerned to, be, to allow us space to be able to address those issues at this point in time? Look at the television panels, the, the discussions, or the radio stations when they discuss issues. Who are the people who usually appear on those discussion programs. Have you seen a forum where there are four men and not a single woman? Whatever the discussion is, whether it's engineering, whether it is neurosurgery, why is it that there's no woman on that forum if there are four men? Yeah? What happens most of the time, I can tell you, is that there are those women, but they, to get them to those forums to speak, 
is usually not as easy as you may think. Because women don't think they have it. Women don't want to tell their stories. Maybe sometimes the media doesn't or the journalists don't go out of their way to look for this, these women. That is where Amwake comes in. We are a focal point for media organizations. And we keep reminding them that please get back to us if you need women to represent issues. And they'll not just represent women's issues. They'll give a perspective that maybe men will not have, you know, um, seen. So there is lack of information and there is about among us that we are not willing to be visible. So what we are doing as Amway to address this, we have trained journalists and I'm talking about journalists, men and women. Because it's not just women journalists who are going to address issues of gender. So that's one of the things Amway does. And we are saying that let the media tell these stories Let's work with the media and let us, as women, remember that all the people we know today is because media has made them what they are. I come from the Federation of Women Entrepreneur Associations where we did a research on what are the key issues that affect women in business. And some of the issues that came out actually do not just affect women, they also affect men. It's access to finance, affordable finance. It's access to markets. So the women are all making the kiondos, they are making the Maasai sandals, they are, they are making, you know, they are, they are, they are, they are producing all these uh, products and offering services, but where is the market? So this access to markets was a big problem. Um, access to information also, because a lot of times you see everybody everywhere is launching something for women. There is a bank that is opening, is it called Msamaria, Grace Loan, uh, diva account and everything. So why is there something being launched every day and yet the, the uptake is very low? So when we find out, we are told that the women do not have information. They do not know that these things are even there in the first place. You can go somewhere in Kenya in the county and you say, are you aware that there is 30% procurement that has been set aside for women, youth and people living with disabilities? And people say, no, I'm not aware. So access to information is something also that came out as, as, as you know, key. Of course, women in business also need to be represented in parliament, in the policy making, um, on the policy making table. Because, you know, like um, Amwiki is saying, when you see people discussing something on TV, there's always a different perspective. She is an academician, so when she, she has the point of view of acad academia, I have the point of view of entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And everybody, she has from a journalistic point of view. So it's good to be inclusive. Let that parliament have everybody so that when they are debating on something, everybody's voice is going to be heard. So those are the issues that KEPSA or the, the women associations in business have been trying to address. As a National Gender and Equality Commission, one issue that we have propagated since our existence is coming up with a, a national uh, GBV working group. In other words, we are coordinating all the gender-based violence activities that come from multi-sectoral approaches. We look at stakeholders drawn from different relevant sectors like health, uh, those from the judicial service, uh, psychosocial I mean, uh, entities, those from the security sector, rescue centers, and we hold a monthly working group that uh, Oh, it happened by coincidence that today was another meeting for the monthly working group in our commission. I just left them. I think they are now done. But the idea is to find out what is it that is going on and how can we be able to avoid duplication of frameworks or activities so that as a nation, we are able to know what organizations are doing and how we are able to move so that we do not have the duplications that uh, Dr. Bonio talked about. And this has worked very well for us in that now we can concretely say that we are coming up with a, a framework and a sexual gender-based framework that will be able to inform the country on how we are doing. Kewopa is actually an association of all women parliamentarians and senators across the political divide. 
basically we're in the business of growing and retaining the number of women in parliament. So Rose Nyamunga, just as an example, I'm giving this as an example of what some of the women reps have been able to do. She has set up a county board to look into monitor on the issues around the 30% procurement as well as 30% uh, quotas that have been set aside for women, youth and persons with disability in terms of employment. She's also doing a monitoring and evaluation framework for the Ways of Fund. So that means that for every appointment, for every employment that the governor of Kisumu does, it must be vetted by that board. So that is an example of one of the things that the women reps are doing. Interestingly, I had a meeting with some of them today lunch, and we were also discussing about how to increase the qualitative value of having their numbers. Um, this is an issue that we've grappled with since the last election, to be honest, because everywhere we go, we are always being asked, when you were 22, you did so much. Yeah? Because when we were 22, uh, we all remember about TGRC. Yeah? Kewapa had a great influence in its establishment as well as them adopting gender mainstreaming guidelines therein. Um, the budget cycle, the one that happens every year, every June we have a new budget. In the last parliament, we set up what we call gender responsive budgeting guidelines that were adopted by the parliamentary budget office. So that means that for every sector that is budgeted, in parliament whether it is education whether it is health there are certain questions that must always be asked to make sure that the budget is responsive to all the needs of all the kenyans in this country my name is uh Odiamba Sudi. i'm a law student at the university of nairobi so i'm majorly going to touch on law first to to Rufosa, i think that's your name you say that you're working on a domestic violence bill it has been uh, stagnant for the past, I think, three years. So could you please fast track it, its enactment? Then number two, there's the two-third gender principle rule. I want to say that it was not created for women. It was created for any gender that is endangered or is, that is at risk. What is happening today, if you look at our Supreme Court, for example, we've given women the bare minimum. That is two out of six judges. Again, look at uh, our cabinet. Out of 18 cabinet secretaries, we have only six women. We are making this thing appear like we are just, uh, we've been forced to do it by law. Why can't they give women like 10 cabinet secretaries out of 18? If we have an electorate that is 50-50, it is unfortunate that we need a framework. Maybe we should just go and intensify our capacity building, our confidence building on the women to, to just uh, believe that they can do this thing. Because if you're 50, 50, it means then the votes also should be cast 50, 50. We shouldn't be talking about one third, two thirds uh, gender rule, really. It is, it is unfortunate that in this day and age we do that. You know, we have said that oh, women are, are, ca are timid, but that's the same thing that makes them less corrupt. And so you'll find that with issue, with the program like Women Enterprise Fund, women's repayment rate is 98%. When you give them something, they give it back to you. You can trust a woman. And so let's, let's, let's extend this just beyond uh, the enterprise and let's try and bring it into a political sphere and see just how far that will go. In terms of AGPO, we are trying our best. There's a lot of demand, the queues are long, but we are looking at modalities of making it more accessible. Persons with disability get direct access. I've been in a, a number of panels where we've been selecting the business people. The problem is not many of them are coming forth. And so uh, to that regard, we are encouraging, if you know anyone with a disability, encourage them to come and apply because the minute we see their name there, if they, if they meet the standards, they just get the deal. Uh, basically, I think we, we say that we cannot end as individual actions. We have to come together. Um, we have to see these things, visibility of some of these actions. I know the ministry is hard at work and doing a fantastic job, but we need to hear it. We need to see it. The people want to also be engaged. So civil society is a critical factor. They're not sitting here as an institution, that is a civil society, but here we are, and we are willing to work together. Mm -hmm.